On July 31st, 1980, the hero of the Wizarding World was born. If you are among the millions of Harry Potter fans around the world, then you know this day is worth celebrating. Which is exactly what our next guests plan to do, and you can join in on the fun. Paige Sarda is with Reach Literacy, and Mary Cool is a volunteer with the organization. They're hosting a celebration for wizards and witches of all ages. How fun! And now we're excited. First of all, I just want to say you ladies look great, both of you. Thank you. This is our normal attire. <laughs> normal attire every yeah. day. Big Harry Potter fans. Right. right. <laughs> all right, let's start with you, Paige. Just give a background about Reach Literacy before we get into this event in case people aren't familiar with it. Right. Our primary mission is we uh, teach adults how to read. So we've been doing that since 1986. Um, we work one-on-one, -on -one. we do group tutoring, um, anybody who comes in our door, 18 and over, we work with them. Okay, so this event then, what activities will be taking place? Sure. Mary, <laughs> Well, we are going to have, um, it's open to all ages, so a lot of parents will be bringing in their kids, and a lot of people that read the book as a kid will be coming in, so 20 to 30 year olds, there's a big portion that will be coming in. And um, we have all things, uh, pin the scar on Harry, we have a little Quidditch game to be played. We have trivia contest. We have all different games to play. And Mary, so this is for all ages, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. How has Harry Potter really changed the world of literacy? I mean, if all ages are coming here, that must mean that all ages read the book. Well, it turned out to be just a, a it was just going to be a children's book. And then parents were reading it with their kids, and then the parents fell in love with it, and the kids grew up, and um, they're in their 30s now, and they love the book, so they're introducing it to their kids, and it just keeps um, cycling. It's not something that just went away one, with one read. And this is a fantasy story. Would you say that fantasy stories were always popular, or did this kind of open the doors? Well, it really changed in the late 90s. Um, fantasy had kind of gone away. I mean, there was uh, The Lord of the Rings and Hobbit, but it kind of stopped. And with her writing this fantasy story, it had opened up for the ordinary people. And little kids could start reading the book before it was like older people were reading um, the fantasy stories. Now it was little kids and older people enjoyed reading it too. What is it about Harry Potter that you think is so popular and makes it so popular? Well, it appeals to the ordinary person. Even though it's wizarding, the, you know, Harry's not a perfect guy. He has lots of faults, and his friends have lots of faults, and it's overcoming them, and it's friendship, and it's um, good versus evil. So there's lots of things that appeal to a wide variety of people. Paige, do you think we need more books like this to help with the literacy skills and what we're facing right now? Are literacy skills doing well? I mean, I, I think any time you have parents who are reading to kids in the home, that's, pretty, that's, a, that's a number one predictor of success for kids reading is having a parent read to them in the household. So anytime you can incorporate that, yes. And if you have people who are enjoying the story together, wonderful. I mean, kids' books are great, but you know, frankly, they're not always the most interesting thing to read. And, but if you have something that you're completely engaged in, that's pretty infectious for kids as well. We can't keep Harry Potter you know, books on our shelf. I mean, it's, it's been around for 20 years, and they're still probably our most asked for book yet. Do you think this changed the way that we are reading books? Like you mentioned how kids and parents, they sit down together and read it. And a lot of times it'll be the parents reading a children's book that maybe the parents don't necessarily love or enjoy, but they're doing it for the kids. But this is for both. Right. And I think the other thing that's great about the, the story is that there's a lot of characters that people can identify, you know. So if you're familiar with the books, there's different houses. And so there's different components and people that are like, oh, I feel like I'm more Hufflepuff or I'm a Slytherin or I'm Gryffindor. You know what I mean? So I think that yeah. that's the other thing, too, is that people are finding an identity for themselves inside the book. And I think that's really changed that. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, we love literacy. We love reading in general. So anytime we can support that, that's terrific. But I do think that we still see adults and kids going forward with this. So we have a Harry Potter fact file pulled up and it just tells us everything about him and you mentioned that you kind of pick your identity and decide what house you'd be in. So right. Mary, I want to start with you. What would you think you would be in? Well, I've um, been following this up for a while and, and taking online quizzes and um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, you, you, you know which one you want and then, and then you get placed in the house and and so I'm a Hufflepuff, which means I'm loyal and hardworking and um, always wet, willing to lend a hand. And Paige over here is Ravenclaw. <laughs> She's pretty smart, so she gets in that group automatically. Yeah. I love that so much. So you can go online and take this quiz and oh, everyone yeah. can figure out what yep. they are. Right. 
So would you say that when relating to the characters, because when you read the book as a kid, your mind works differently than when you're an adult. So is this a book that you would recommend or that many people do read more than once as they get older too? Yeah, I think Mary and I have kids, uh, older kids that help, uh, Harry Potter came out like right at their at their age group and read that when they were in their preteens and teens. And then our, our older boys have read them again because their experience reading it as a fourth and fifth grader is completely different than what they get as an adult. And they enjoyed it just as much, if not more, because they understood so much more and really understood the background and the characters. So I think absolutely should read it again. And back to the literacy skills for kids, I remember my first thought when the Harry Potter books, when I read the first one, it was, this is a thick book. This mm -hmm. is big compared to what I'm reading at a third grade level. So right. has that enhanced kids to trying bigger books and reading and keeping attention span longer? Yeah, I think the biggest thing with reading, you know, besides language acquisition and understanding, is the comprehension component. And so, you know, reading with an adult or having somebody else where you can talk about that is, do I understand what I read? And so maybe as a, as a fifth grader, I read this book and I understood half of it. As an adult, when I read it, I'm like, oh, it makes so much more sense. I think that's okay. I think that you understand and you pick up the basics of the story. But anytime you can bring in knowledge and you work on your comprehension skills, it's a plus. All right, well, let's talk about the event details really quick. So this is on Tuesday, July 31st from 4 to 7 at Reach Literacy. And it's Harry Potter themed treats and fun. And you guys mentioned earlier what it is. So Good yeah, luck. you should come in costume. We'd love to see you in okay. your costume. Yeah. We bore ours today. It's a free event. You don't have to, there's no charge for that. So it's come and go. You can come anytime you want. Um, we'll have a magician, a wizard at 530. So if you want to come and see the wizard, you can do that. All right. Well, sounds like a lot of fun. Thank you both so much for coming Thanks in and sharing lot. this.